Solid oxide fuel cell is an electrochemical device which converts chemical energy to electrical energy. It typically operates at temperatures from 600 up to 950 degrees. At these temperatures, the electrolyte, cathode and anode are oxide ion conductors. A fuel cell needs a constant flow of fuel. A fuel such as hydrogen or methane is directed to the anode where it reacts with oxide ions from electrolyte lattice. Released electrons are transferred to the cathode through an external load. In the cathode, the oxygen molecule adsorbs and dissociates the oxygen atoms. In the presence of electrons, the adsorbed oxygen atom will reduce the oxide ion. The oxide ions move through the electrolyte to the anode and react with hydrogen from a fuel. Electrolyte is ion conductive ceramic solid oxide membrane. Electrolyte material should not have electronic conductivity and it has to be dense to stop gas flow through it. Typical electrolyte material is yttria stabilized zirconia. Cathode material has to be good electron and oxide ion conductor. It is where oxygen reduction takes place. Typical cathode material is lanthanum strontium cobaltite. Anode material has to be a good catalyst, oxide ion as well as electron conductor, and it needs to be porous. These properties are achieved if metallic nickel and oxide ion conductive electrolyte are mixed. Electrochemical reaction takes place on triple phase boundary. The activity of anode is also largely defined by length of triple phase boundary, as well as porosity of electrode. One unit cell in the SOFC stack contains two current collectors with gas flow channels, cathode, anode and electrolyte. Current correctors are made from special steel with coatings. Several technologies are applied for production of SOFC membrane electrode assemblies. Most widely used are technologies based on screen printing and tape casting. First, oxide powders are pulverized and thoroughly mixed. Then, mixed with organic solvents, dispersants, plasticizers and binders. Obtained paste of anode and electrolyte will be tape casted to get the thin film. Typical electrolyte materials are yttria stabilized zirconia, scandia stabilized zirconia and catalina doped ceria. After slow drying of tape casted layers, the lamination of layers will be carried out. For this, the layers are vacuumized in a plastic bag. In this demonstration, we laminate layers using isostratic pressing at elevated temperatures. Technically, it's like putting the layers in a seawater approximately 600 meters below sea level. As a result, the cathode and electrolyte layers have stick together. After lamination, layers of anode and electrolyte will be sintered in high temperatures from 1200 to 1500 degrees. Solid oxide anode electrolyte assembly will be covered with cathode layer using a screen printing method. Typical cathode materials are lanthanum strontium cobaltite and lanthanum strontium manganite complex oxides. After making the cathode layer, the heat treatment will be carried out. The cathode has been applied separately from anode electrolyte assembly because it needs thermal treatment at lower temperatures. If single cells are completed, then they will be stacked together with interconnect materials with gas flow channels. The voltage of a stack can be built up by adding required number of single cells in series. Here we have assembled a small demo single cell. Methane flame heats it up and provides a flow of fuel at the anode. Of course, in real SOFC stack, fuel is consumed more efficiently. Solid oxide fuel cells operate at temperatures from 600 to 950 degrees Celsius. Maximum voltage obtained was 0.94 volts, which is close to the theoretical value in a dual chamber cell. Current was up to 25 milliampers. Advantages of solid oxide fuel cells is that no platinum is needed 
and in addition to hydrogen, it is able to utilize wood gas, methane or other carbonaceous fuels. Electrical efficiency of solid oxide fuel cell might be approximately up to 70%, which is almost twice the efficiency of classical heat engines. Solid oxide fuel cell systems have been developed for the size of small power plant, for single household, trains, boats, as well as for cars. Excess wind energy could be stored in hydrogen and converted back to electricity using SOFCs. The development of SOFC anode materials is mainly focused on the improvement of sulfur tolerance and redox stability. No fully oxide-based anodes are under development. For example, lanthanum strontium comb manganite and lanthanum strontium titanate. Main directions of cathode development are the improvement of oxygen electroreduction activity and electrode stability against micro concentrations of water and sulfuric compounds in air.